Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. And Happy New Year, since we are at the beginning of a new year of wonderful legacy action. To kick off this year's action, I am playing a donation deck that won in the monthly raffle that I do. This was December's winning patron and they got to choose a donation deck for the channel. And here it is, we're playing a bit of beautiful Canadian Threshold, which is a deck that I love a great deal. It's one of my favourite decks of all time in Legacy. And it used to be like the best deck in Legacy about 12-ish years ago. So uh, we still got a lot of good tools. So let's get into what this deck does. So we are a very much tempo deck. So we have four channelers, three nimble mongeese. We're trying to put cards into our graveyard as much as possible. We've got Tarmogoyce that also get buffed by a bunch of stuff being graveyards. And we have some Merc Ties as like a big flying threat. So our idea really is to stick a one drop threat and then protect and grow it using things like Force of Will, Daze, Spell Pierce. You've got some removal spells here. And then we've got some cantrips. And we also have a seal of removal as well. So this is an enchantment. We have a tar fire, which is a tribal. So we've got lots of different types to put into our graveyard. We've got the artifact for the bauble. So we can just grow our Tarmogoyf and channelers quite easily. We also have this beautiful package here that I do adore quite a lot. Four wastelands, four stifle. I do not think stifle is a very good card almost all of the time. However, when you're pairing it with a hyper tempo deck with four wastelands, then you have me on board. And you get a lot of value out of your stifles, and you can just have lots of non games where your opponent doesn't get to play magic, which is the best way of playing magic sometimes, right? I've played this on the channel a few times. I back to back trophied with a Canadian Threshold builds. One was literally a build from 12 years ago that I just played for a laugh and we trophied, and then I updated it to something that almost looked like this, and we got a trophy as well. So let's see if we can have another trophy. Would be nice, but uh, I'm not expecting it, but it would be, it would be nice. Mana base wise, the classic, no basic lands, just three Volks, three Trops, and a bunch of fetches. Living the dream. Sideboard wise, we've got some Graveyard Hate in Social Extraction and Graphics Cage. Uh, quite a lot of Artifact Hate actually. We've got Casting the Fire, which can also kill Bow Masters and other 1 1s and stuff. Um, meltdowns and Null Rods. So we've got a lot of action for that. And then we've got a couple of Life from the Loans and a couple of Veil of Summers, so we can protect ourselves against some. Potent black spells, like targeting our hand, potentially, or forcing some bits and pieces through. And Life from the Loam, when you're playing a Wasteland Stifle deck, you are hammering your opponent's lands quite a bit. And with Life from the Loam, we can quite feasibly remove all of our opponent's lands that cast spells in the post cyborg games of some matchups. So that's going to be pretty good. And we have three Pyroblast, which we kind of need because we're a little bit cold to opposing Merktai Regents if we're not countering them. So having the Pyroblast alongside the Seed of Removal can kind of turn the corner enough. And Tarmogoyf can outgrow some Merktide Regions. If we bounce a Merktide Region, the next one they play might not be big enough to tangle with good old-fashioned Tarmogoyf. So yeah, here we are playing it old-school Canadian Threshold style with a few new bells and whistles. Remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my content throughout the year. It, uh, I really appreciate it. Also, if you are interested in getting donation decks on the channel, you can contact me and have that happen. Alternatively, you can become one of my patrons. I have a tier where you just get a donation deck every month. I also have the raffle that I hold uh, on the first of every month. And one of my patrons just gets a free donation deck for the channel. And you can sign up for that for as little as like $2 a month. So why not support the channel and maybe get your deck on here? All right, beginning of the year plug over. Let's jam some Canadian Threshold. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, they're opening hand for round one. We can cast a ponder off of Volcanic Island and try and find a little bit of business. We do have a Wasteland for some interaction. We have a Lightning Bolt for some interaction and we have a Force of Will. We will need another blue card for, but I think I will keep this. All right, Grizzle Puff, what are you up to? An Ancient Tomb Gamer. All right, with no play off of it. So I think I'm going to wasteland this immediately. If you play an Ancient Tomb and don't cast anything off it, you can be sure that I'm going to try and stymie your ability to get into this game. So we're thinking maybe it's like an initiative deck that's got a really good turn two play. So turn two initiative guy could be Turbo Muxus. We'll see. So we can ponder here. 
It's an ancient tomb game where the stifle's probably not going to be the most important thing. So let's ponder here. Uh, we have threat. I like threats. We have the days as well. So I think we'll put the ponder, then the mongoose, then the days, and then draw. Then we know the top card of our library. So we're going to bauble our opponent here. Broadside bombardiers. Okay, so we could be goblins. We could be mono red prison. There's, you know, there's a few options that it could be. Team bombardiers in a couple of initiative lists as well. Is this going to name goblin? It is. Force of will not going to be on here. We do get to kill this. So, what are our choices here? One, two, three. Play this land out. I think we want to get our nimble mongoose running. So we can hold up stifle for... Um, does this actually work on sticker goblin? Because it's not... It is a mana ability, but it's a triggered ability. So maybe that's going to be different. We'll find out in a second. Like, we can always just... Uh, lightning bolt this so it doesn't get... Okay, they're just playing the bombardiers. That's fine. I think we just kill the bombardiers. They can swing for two if they want. Sure. We have five cards in our graveyard. We can ponder. And we're getting towards it. So I think I... Because we have the red source here, I'm probably going to cast the ponder off of the Volk. Um, so we can, we can make ourselves have a 3-3 three, three right now if we want to. Or we can wait a turn... And just jam a bigger creature than theirs. That seems quite good. It does turn off our stifle as an option though. So maybe we'll put the force, then the goif, then the tarn. So we'll play the tarn. We could hold back with the mongoose, but I think we are aiming to go on the aggressive here. And then we can just play uh, a tarn goif next turn. Because this says mana abilities can't be targeted. We can at least try and hit the sticker goblin first. What is this? Uncountable goblin spell of some description. A goblin ringleader. That's a pretty good one to stifle. Now we have a 3-3. Three, three. They do get to bash us for four here. But we get to jam a Tarmogoyf that's going to be somewhat large and in charge. And we'll go and get ourselves a... Entrop is fine. And... I like the ability to hard cast a daze here, although this does make brainstorms worse if we have as we do have a daze that we can throw back if we need to. So we have a five six and a three three. That's quite a lot of power we can begin jamming with. If we'd have held battle blocks last turn, we might have been able to stop them, but they might have just attacked with a goblin and changed how they played their turn up. A goblin matron. No. You don't get to have the things that are good. Battle cry goblin. That is a thing that is good. We probably could have countered that one. That probably would have been a, a better play there. All right, let's see what they want to do with our Nimble Mongoose if it attacks. Um, so we have Chandler is quite good too. All right. Um, are we just sending in with all the boys here? This is a lot of power. I'm down. Now, this is a two-turn clock. Right, they're going for a trade here. Right, so we kill a Battlecry Goblin. Our time of life grows a little bit. No, it doesn't grow yet because um, we already had a creature in their graveyard because time of life counts both graveyards. That's why there was no... It didn't get bigger when the mongoose died. The other option we had was to try and stifle... Wait for them to get a Muxus and then stifle the Muxus with the matron. But I'm not convinced that's as good as just not letting them have one in the first place. Because maybe they get something else that we don't know about that ruins us. A battle cry goblin. They're going to pump their team. They are. Okay. So this is 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So if you block this, we take 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. And then we're basically trying to draw a lightning bolt to win the game. Oh, they had a Simon Spirit guy, so we just lose. All right. Yep, my bad. I think we could have played that one slightly differently. We could have countered one of the uh, goblins. So... Cast into the fire seems good here, but nothing else does. And cast into the fire doesn't seem really good, it just seems okay. Is it better than any things we have going on? Honestly, probably better than Spell Pierce. That's about it. We have our own goblin, of course, in Tar Fire. Um, yeah, I don't think we have any other tools. I would love some Hydro Blasts. Maybe Hydro Blasts are a thing we need to have access to on our sideboard. 
I think the Turbo Muxus deck is the best aggro deck in Legacy right now, so maybe need to pay it a bit more mind. Um, currently the card gets a little bit more speedily, but I think this is okay. We can keep this. Are we just holding up a lightning bolt in case we have a turn one sticker goblin? I think we probably are, and then we'll brainstorm next turn, or ponder next turn whilst holding up the lightning bolt, or we can wasteland and do some stuff. Unlicensed Hearse. Alright, wasn't expecting that one, to be honest with you. That's going to be pretty good against us, truth be told. Another lightning bolt. Right, let's crack this. I think our opponent is probably going to have us. I'm not feeling very confident. Alright, let's ponder. Um, no, we're looking for a threat here. Days. Alright, that's acceptable too. So they're going to strip both these cards out. Goblin Matron. Let's try and daze that. We've got Spirit Guide to pay. They're wasting a Spirit Guide on a Matron. That's not the end of the world for us. Right, here it goes. Name Sticker Goblin. Sure. Stifle is not a bad one to have. Are we just waste sanding our opponent here? Because this unlicensed hearse is going to be doing some work in the not too distant future. Let's take out their red source here. And I'm going to hold up Lightning Bolt and Stifle. I don't think we're stifling unlicensed hearse activations. But we could stifle the crewing if we wanted to save ourselves some damage. A Chrome Mox, sure. So we'll play Sticker Goblin and we will Lightning Bolt Sticker Goblin. This has to be in play for its trigger to work. And we're going to want to Lightning Bolt this anyway just to keep out play. I think Stifle for something like a Muxus Aeron might be more potent. Or for a Recruiter when they try and reload. Right, so they're crewing the, the Hearse now, so they're going to get an attack for four. I'm sorry, for five for from the Hearse and then the rest from the Matron. We are floundering a little bit here, if I'm being honest. Um, we kind of have to brainstorm with this mana, which is awkward. We do want to hold up this red mana. Um, I like Lightning Bolts here. We can keep the creatures down, they won't be able to crew the Hearse. Um, definitely don't want to Merc Tide Regent, though. We put the Tile on top. We'll play this. The plan is to not bauble yet, and we can try and load up our graveyard in one go, maybe, and get a Merc Tide going. So we can Bolt, Fetch, Bauble. It's three cards. But I probably might have things like Pyroblast in the deck as well. This guy. Okay. If we bolt, they'll, they'll they'll make the hearse, and then if the hearse gets active, then okay, they're not attacking with the hearse. I was gonna say if the hearse gets active, then we get to make our merc tide next turn. They just come in for one here, and they're probably gonna hearse us now, so we can't merc tide next turn. Yep, it's correct play, and they're taking the bolts in case we have something like a mystic sanctuary. I right, know the top card of our library is, and we don't want it because it's another merc tide. I'm going to crack this for a red source. One, two, three, four. Look at the top card of their library. It's a war chief. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can make a little Merc Tide here. We're not going to get many opportunities to make a Merc Tide. It's only going to have one counter on it though. But if they tap these Ancient Tombs, this plus the Lightning Bolt will be enough. Oh, and got Tar Fire as well. So we've got five damage. So we have enough, even if they don't tap Ancient Tombs. Name sticker goblin. All right. Is the one last card they have in hand, Muxus? It is. All right. How much are we going to pay the price here? This has to kill us this turn. Uh, Name sticker goblin, broadside bombardiers. This attacks a two. And then they throw eight to us. That's nine, ten damage. They've also got the sticker goblin here, so they can just go and get battle cry goblin. Yep. That's us dead. If we just held up a red source, we would have been able to kill their guy. But we looked on top of their library, so there was like, we knew the Merc Tide wasn't on top. But yeah, if we'd have just not done anything this turn, we might have been able to, to kill them. But yeah, this matchup feels tough. I think the Goblin deck is, like I said, I think it is a proper tier one deck. I think it might be one of the, the very best decks in Legacy right now. It just absolutely ruins people so easily. All right, let's go to round two. All right, our opening hand for round two needs a mulligan. All right, this is a pretty decent hand. Do you, not, do you want double days or not? Chandler into days. Like, our mana's going to be spoken for, so I think we put the stifle back. Because we're going to jam a Chandler holding up days, then we're going to jam a Tarmogoyf holding up days. 
So our mana's going to be taken care of for the first few turns. Uh, we're going to get Goblin again. Are we just dead on turn one? Favor the Mirror Break. Okay, so we're not straight up Goblins. We could be Painter. We could be Monorail Prison. Let's get a Channeler down. And pass a turn. We're going to see some cards discarded. So we get that idea of what our opponent's on. I'm imagining Painter. There's been an uptick in Painter lately. Deck's very good. Oh, no, we're on something else over there. That was a four drop. I will not be blocking. And a land. We're going to see him in. Uh, let's see here. They're going to play around days. Under Mountain Adventurer. That is a pretty strong Magic the Gathering card. So we're playing Red Green Initiative here. Okay. Uh, we don't have many options, but those options involve playing Tarmogoyf. There's two types, so it's going to be a 2-3, but we can make it a 3-4 with uh, a daze if they cast anything. We can just pump our time and go so they don't get... Well, they do get to attack with their Underground Adventurer because it's got Vigilance and probably going to get forged up this turn as well. But we need to put some cards in our graveyard for this Dragon's Race channel. Yep, they're forging up the guy, so that's out of removal range for us. Seal of removal does work, but lets them... Pay four to go into the dungeon and do some stuff. If they untap with Reflective Kiki Jiki, we almost certainly lose because they just get to clone their Undermountain Adventurer. We're not blocking here. We need our evasive creature to get through here. One, two. So they have Undermountain Adventurer, so they can certainly pay for dazes. Uh, this taps for two mana. So if we daze this, it would just be to put a card in our graveyard, which I think is acceptable at this point. It will tap down their Undermount Adventure as well. Uh, channel that can go into the graveyard. So we're going to have three types here. Oh, they have another Spirit Guide, do they? So I want to tap down this Undermount Adventure now. Am I using just a daze to tap? Is that is that acceptable? Is that an acceptable use of our time? I don't think we're mm, probably not beating the Minsk and Boo either. It's going to make a 4-4. Four -four. I don't know how we win this game. Yep, so they've got a lot of guys. We do have a 4-5. That's not nothing. A Ponder. Can this find us? This will give us Delirium, so we can attack. Uh, Wasteland. That's not really what we want need right now. Uh, Spell Pierce, Force of Will, Stifle. Stifle can st stifle them getting the initiative off of us. But... They have this Kiki Jiki that's doing some work. And if we take the Stifle... Hmm, what we like here, ideally... Like, a Lightning Bolt is fine. Seal of Removal is pretty good. But I think Stifle, Stifling the Undermount Adventure is probably acceptable. So we say no here. And we'll shuffle up for another red source. But we're in this horrible spot where everything our opponent has is just... Too good. So if we go to the tax here, we have a 5-6, which is not big enough. This is going to be a 7 power guy. We can take the initiative, though. I don't think we attack Minsk and Boo here. It has Vigilance, but not Reach. Plenty of targets for Stifle here, but are we going to be able to leverage them well? No basics, as we mentioned before. So now we're trying to tread water a little bit. Maybe this Ancient team can help us out, but they have... Some real potent options here. This is going to be a seven power guy. And they'll go into the trap. If we stifle this, they copy this, and we're getting attacked with two five fives. I don't think we can win this game. Don't know why we play that extra turn, really. Um, okay. So, again, this is a matchup where we don't really have any tools for it. Again, Hydroblast would be nice, but we don't have them. Life from Alone, Wasteland is definitely a thing that we can consider here. Certainly interested in that. Spell Pierce for Minsk and Boo is nice. Um, if we can just lock our opponent underneath Wastelands and sort of stop them from ever getting up and running, that would be quite nice. Tarfire is not killing much. Maybe the Tarfire goes for a loam. And then maybe we don't have the time to be pondering around that much. Need more aggressive starts. I don't know. This feels like we are under the gun a little bit. Um, 
like, do I think double wasteland force of will is good? We will need to find a land, but any any fetch land or anything. We have two we have two draw steps to find it. All right, this is a weird one, but I think I'm going to keep it. We have force of will plus double wasteland, so maybe we can get our opponent to not ruin us. Let's just play our wasteland and hold it up. There is a city of traitors. What are you going to play, opponent? Chance of the Void, but X equals 1. I think we probably have to cap spell that one. Using the Wasteland on the... Oh, Veil of Summer as well. So brought in a 1-drop. Interesting. Okay. The game is going to be somewhat more difficult. I mean, absolutely sort of helped our opponent out there. So, I guess we are playing a Wasteland. This is going to die on its own anyway. Do we think our opponent can deploy a threat. I think we are still supposed to get rid of the city here. We don't want to give our opponent loads of mana for next turn. Because if they get one thing into play now we lose. There is an ancient tomb. Let's stifle. I think we are just hitting our opponent's lands. Obviously they're playing that out knowing that we had a wasteland. But yeah. The double wasteland force of will hand not really working so far. Because we can't just draw a land and start making threats either. Because of the chalice. We're supposed to bring a meltdown for this. All right, we can stifle uh, into the chalice, which will give us a card in our graveyard, which makes Merktide a live draw. Cavern of Souls. All right, that's pretty bad for our dazes. Giant. So under mountain adventure it is. So we are going to stifle this, and the chalice is going to counter this. But we need to put some cards in the graveyard so that we at least have a chance of making a Merktide. In the near future. And Stifles can only get into the graveyard if we have a target that's a triggered ability. So things like Lightning Bolt and Mongoose we can just play whenever and put into the Chalice. And this is obviously a thing that will pump our Merktide. So we need to draw Land and Merktide in the next two turns. Otherwise I think we lose. A Channeler. That's not either of those things. So we get bashed for 5, then we get bashed for 10, and then we die. So we've got like two draw steps to put something really good together. If they play another threat here, I think we lose. Having a bad time versus Ancient Tomb Gamers today. Yeah, the fact that you get to attack with this and tap it for mana is pretty gross. Another giant. Right, let's put another card in there. So next turn we take 13. It will be on one. So we can't draw a fetch land. Oh no, we take five here actually, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 10, 13. So we're not dead, but we will be very soon. A thorough ruining there. Nope, we are done. Yeah, getting absolutely clowned on by Ancient Tomb Gamers today. Let's go to the next round. All right, our opening hand, we have a channeler and some other stuff going on. We'll keep this around three and hopefully we can Turn things around. We're going to play another Ancient Tomb Gamer. A Flooded Strand. That is not an Ancient Tomb. That's good to see. Right. Volcanic Island into Dragon's Rage Channel, please. Right, now we have a Daze protecting us and Force of Will. We can even double Force if it's going to be that sort of matchup. But we'll find out soon. A Plains. Are they going to plow our guy? No. Okay. So we're looking more like Death and Taxes splashing black rather than the four like the four or five color euro index that you used to see a lot of a swords to plowshares i don't really want our guy to die we do have another one though so i think that's okay we would like to have guaranteed hitting another land but it puts a creature in the graveyard we are now showing our opponent that we don't have a second land so a wasteland is just gonna get fired right in our heart here. there it is Snap that right off. I know I would. A stone forge mystic. Interesting. We could daze this to protect our land. And they will just... Wait a second. Is our land... How important is our land here? We're, like, we're definitely counterspelling this. Do I want this day? I guess... We'll fire this off. The brainstorm. Let's see what we find. Ponder. This is the graveyard. Now they want to wasteland. Um, I'm going to pick up our land here. 
So we're trading the days for the wasteland there. Is what's happening there. Um, sorry, we didn't get a channel in our graveyard because it was a plow. Ignore me there. Um, so we'll definitely put this little friend in. And this will give us a 3-3 channeler that we can then deploy a second 3-3 channeler. Double counter spell in the Stoneforge. I think they wait. They should have waited for the Force of Will to resolve. All right. A little weird flurry of spells off there. Now I wish we'd kept the Brainstorm instead, but maybe we'd run another blue card. Wasteland of our very own. All right. So let's play a channeler and start bashing for damages. We've got a strong clock. We've got the Wasteland, which can disrupt a little bit. And if we draw a blue card, we have a Force of Will that we can sort of lean on. Spirit of the Labyrinth. Sure, we're not really about that right now. We're just about turning our guys sideways. A Daze. That is a blue card. I'll take that. All right, so this is six. Put our opponent to ten. So two more swings and we get them. We have a Force of Will to help with this to make sure that we don't get caught out. Or a Daze, depending on what our opponent wants to do. There is an Arab Mesa. Probably going to see Black Mana soonish. But because it's an Arab Mesa, it has to be a Scrubland that we can Wasteland. So maybe they just get the White Source. Also depends on their hand. Being on 9 is really good for us too, because it means that if one of our Channelers dies after our next attack, we still get to kill them. A Lion's Sash. I don't think we want this to resolve, because that's going to be pretty good against some of the things we're doing. So let's get our Surveil on. They've already played a land. Uh, Brainstorm is an excellent draw. Uh, but not with the Br Spirit of the Labyrinth, actually. So let's put in the Graveyard. So why you think things through, I'm just thinking through out loud. Another Channeler is exactly what I really want here. Just keep making guys until our opponent is no more. Be getting a little attack in here. Yep, we fall to 15. But we put our opponent to 3 next turn. Which makes Line Vault lethal as well. Smash down another one. We have three lethal threats. If they can wipe our graveyard, then obviously our threats get a lot worse, but they're still pretty close to dying to them if they spend their whole turn wiping our graveyard. Sort of like a rest in peace. All right, I scooped it up. So this is a matchup where Cast Into the Fire looks pretty reasonable. Uh, Meltdown can sometimes do stuff in this matchup. Like we can take out some of their artifacts, but their living weapons is also kind of awkward. So I think it's probably the Spell Pierce for the Cast Into the Fire. Uh, we've got, what, six removal spells there? And Seal of Removal, which can do stuff. Stifle can stifle a Living Weapon trigger. It can stifle an activation of a Wasteland or an Ether Vial. So it's got a lot of game to it. Our hand is quite land heavy. And Mongoose is not the strongest threat. But I quite like being land heavy in this matchup. Purely because they're going to be trying to attack our mana base. Right, we'll keep this. We'll draw a Brainstorm at some point, send some stuff back, it'll be fine. Our Prince Mulligan to 5. Definitely gives us more of a fighting chance. Having a creature with Shroud is quite nice here. Although, like we've seen, they're playing Spirits, which can block quite nicely. If we have a 3-3. Three, three. Aether Vial. I think with our opponent on so few resources, we want to... Make it so they don't get all this free mana off of the Aether Vial. Though I might well have kept a one land Aether Vial hand. Right, Merktide Regent, that's a guy. Not exactly a great combo with uh, Nimble Mongoose. But we'll see. If a 3-3 is no longer good, then we can trade it out for a Merktide. I don't want to show our opponent this Wasteland yet. Ooh, a Brainstorm there. They are quite likely to have an Orcish Bowmasters. So I don't really want to attack into the Orcish Bowmasters. They're playing the fetch lands. I gotta imagine they got some black in there. If they give us an opportunity to play this brainstorm around the bowmasters, I will take it. No, they're really just sitting there. It's annoying. Right, I think we're going to attack into the bowmasters this time. They play it and they play it. Okay, they didn't play it. Interesting. Sure, I think we pass. Maybe I'm playing around his bowmasters too much. Alright, so now's our opportunity. Should have done that off the Tropical Island. Although we are definitely shuffling some stuff away here. Uh, I don't think we want all of these lands now. So these can both go. And in case they have opposition agent, we'll also crack our fetch. Alright, so we've got four cards in our graveyard. A Flicker Wisp. 
do I care about Flicker Wisp? And am I just... How much use is this daze going to get us? Probably not much from this point onwards. So I think we're just going to daze this. Right, that's five cards in Graveyard. Tarmogoyf. Nice to see you, buddy. After all these years. So we have Tarmogoyf. We could have hard cast that daze instead of bouncing a land. Last turn. But I kind of like having lands in hand. And just in case you draw a Brainstorm that turn. Instead of a Tarmogoyf. Caracas. A Skyclave Apparition. When Scammer enters battlefield, one target non-land number you don't control with mana value four or less. When Skyclave... Okay, so we have to let it take our guy and then we tough fire it. If we kill this, it still takes our guy because of the way it's worded. Which is now we get to attack with the 2-2 as well as our Mongoose, who is going to be a 3-3 when we start uh, wastelanding our opponent. No wastelanding here. Might keep them off of things like Palace Jailer. Sure, we'll wasteland here. We'll save this fetch land for a bit. So we can deploy a Merc Tide. But I quite like having a Hexproof, uh, a Shrouded Attacker here. If they play something that can roadblock our Mongoose, then we'll do it. And we'll obviously address that situation when the time comes. All right, Flicker Wisp. That is a good example of something that can block the that can do stuff against our Nimble Mongoose. So we can attack with our Mongoose and see what they want to do. And then we can play the Merc Tide afterwards. I think they'll take this trade. Sure. We have a Fetch Land in hand so we can get green if we need it. The token won't come back. A Daze. Okay. Attack for three with the Mongoose. We're going to take the trade. I want them to take the trade, really. All right. Excellent. All right. So blue, blue. Instant, 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 and a wasteland is fine. All right, we have a 7-7, seven, seven, backed up by Days. Our opponent's got two cards in hand. One card in hand. Ah, oh, that's so good. All right, Battle of Bywater kills our guy. We have more cards in hand, but they don't do anything necessarily. But for the purposes of Brainstorm, it's nice to have them. All right, a Days. Uh, I guess we play out this land so we can hard cast and well we can't hard cast and to a regular one but I think it's fine like our fetch land is going to need okay rush down port all right that's a good thing to have an additional land for they should be putting urine into hand at this point which is something that we're relatively likely to be able to daze not putting urine into hand when they had no cards in hand that's really interesting to me I've obviously thought about it for a while so I'm curious what they were thinking about a ponder. I would like to cast a ponder. Uh, a daze, a stifle, any order in shuffle, I think. Another daze. Uh, okay, well, the urine's not resolving. Maybe they've deduced that what we have in hand is dazes, because we're not casting them, but then they should still put the urine into hand while they had the mana available. Okay, so put the urine into hand this time. And so our triple day is going to be enough here. There's a possibility that that's the case. One of our lands, sure. A lightning bolt. Not the most useful. But not unhelpful. Yorion Sky Nomad. Let's get a tropical island. Let's cast a daze. Let's cast a daze. Let's cast a daze. <laughs> All these days is finally coming in. I would have preferred a Force of a blue card. A Mishra's Bauble. What have you got, opponent? An Arab Mesa. Sure. That's something I don't have to worry about. Let's play our land and pass. Just want to make sure that we have two mana in case we draw a Merc Tide Regent. Are we supposed to fire off? We have three dazes, a Ponder. That'd be quite a large Merc Tide. That'd be a two turn Merc Tide. So we're going to get ported. A Stifle. We'll just play out the other Volk here. Because we don't want to get Wastelanded off of green if they have a Wasteland or ported off of green. So we're going to leave this in hand for now. But having extra mana might be useful. We have two spells we can play here. What is this? Flicker Wisp. Okay, that's not that exciting. I'm going to untap their planes. That's fine. We can fire for Lightning Bolt as and when we want to. We can use it when after they port. We can bolt this. But how important is this to kill? I think it's worth killing here. Dragon's Rage Channel. Nice that you come along to the party. So by not playing out a Tropical Island here, 
we give ourselves access to green mana next turn, but we also mean that they can put us down and stop us from stifling, I think. All right, they did have nothing. Excellent. So they're going to put us down. Could stifle their port activation, but that's not really the most helpful. All right, let's go attacks. Basher three. Do I play this guy out into potential Battle of Bywater? I think we do need to get this game won, so I will play this out. But let it be known, they could battle us again. They usually run two of them in their 75. Mother of Runes, sure. Not helpful on this board. Let us put us down. Alright, let's ponder. We might be able to win the game this turn if we find Lightning Bolt. Nimble Mongoose. I don't really want to play this threat out, but I will leave it on top. We can hold this in hand. And maybe we're supposed to just dig for Lightning Bolts here. My opponent's on very low resources. Uh, I think we put the Goose, Brainstorm, and the Wasteland. Attack. So we have that thing where if they have something good that we want to stifle, we do need to play out our trop here. And because of the position we're in, I think that's okay to do. I just don't want to get ported off of Stifle and then they play like some triggered ability that's going to ruin our day. My Living Weapon isn't good enough here. But if they like Stoneforge, Jitte, Equip Jitte, Attack with Mother of Runes, that's kind of not nice. Right, they got one card in hand, and they're done. All right, so we managed to get there. Our opponent's mulligan didn't hurt us. Um, but again, I'm finding that we're not really having that much in the way of sideboard stuff to bring in. Now, obviously, our main deck is pretty, you know, all-purpose, good against lots of different things. And has game against everything, but maybe that's something we can look at when we get to the end. Let's go to round four. Into round four, we have a lot of interaction. We have an island ponder. I think this is worth keeping. We can try and find a threat. I prefer just starting out with threats, if I'm being honest. Um, our red is kind of more important for us. We can always fetch another red. So I think we just lead off on this ponder. Uh, I don't really want any of these cards, if I'm being perfectly honest. Looking for threats. I think we're going to shuffle them. Right, a brainstorm that lets us look for more threats next turn. It's a blue card for Force of Will if we need to fire that off for some reason. Okay, we're back in the old goblin world. This didn't go very well last time. Um, I think we want to hold up Lightning Bolt anyway, so we're not going to brainstorm until our opponent's end of turn. Or in response to something, if we feel the need. Because then we have a better idea of what we're looking for. There is an Ancient Tomb. There is a Goblin Bombardiers. So they can pay around this quite easily. So I think step one for us is going to be Brainstorm. Mm, stifle, Goif. Um, I'd like to find another land if I could. Uh, I quite like how Stifle works in this matchup. Um, I think if we get rid of Ponder and Seal here. This guy comes in. At the beginning of combat we kill this so they can't stack fight it for any mana right now. We do have to get a red source, but we will want to put our time away into play at some point. Let's say no to this guy. He brings a pain pretty easily. Right, so crash in for one. No cavern as of yet. Right, we immediately find the land we want. Let's go and get a tropical island. To play a Tarmogoyf. We now have the biggest beefcake on the board. Obviously that can change quite a lot. Because goblins these days are pretty hench. They've been down the gym. They're pretty chunky boys. Battle cry goblin. We kind of got messed up once for not countering this, didn't we? I think we do counter this one now. Is it the brainstorm or is it the... It's like Stifle can do quite a lot here. Um, I think it's the days. I don't think this prospect is attacking. Time going versus goblins. A tale as old as time. Um, I think I'm quite happy to just waste down their ancient tomb here. Just take them off with some mana. I, I do like them losing life, but I think taking them all further away from Muxus is where we want to be. Let's go prospect, that's fine. It's very nice mountains. Mirage, good set. Scope prospector, sure. Attack of the very small men. Dragon's Race Channeler. I think we need to attack first. Bash with the boy. 
Getting damages in. I'm probably doing some calculations there, I think. All right, so what do we have in our graveyard? No creature, no artifact, no enchantment, no tribal. One, two, three, four, five. So they could definitely make a Muxus this turn. If that's what they want to do. A Battle Cry Goblin. How much do I care about Battle Cry Goblin? They've got one card in hand. I don't care that much. If they activate here, then we can stifle this. Uh, and they just spent two life for no reason. It's the graveyard with that. No haste for them. They can sack a guy, but obviously that massively reduces the amount of damage they're getting. Right, they're going for it. Oh, they had a Supreme Spirit Guide as their last card. Understood. Just going to attack. So let's cast this Brainstorm now. See if we can turn this into a 3-3. Into your graveyard. 3-3 you know, now is better. If we find a Lightning Bolt or a Tar Fire, we win here. This gets to gobble up a, a Prospector. Potentially. Okay, so we have a Lightning Bolt here. This on top. Not this one. We'll put the Mongoose on top and then this. So this is two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we just take that and then we just kill them on the crack pack. They got no cards in hand. If they sack any guys, they lose damage overall. All right. Attacks. Attack little creatures. Line and bolt the face. And that's lethal. All right. Sideboarding. We didn't really feel like we had very much here. Graft Digger's Cage is something we probably should have bought in for Muxus before, so that's definitely my bad there. And that comes in over the Spell Pierce. Uh, and then it's cast into the fire is the other thing that has some text here. I think we'll drop a Daze for that. Like they are trying to cast a 6 drop, so the Dazes can come in handy. But yeah, I think this is about where we're at. Um, I don't believe they're bringing in Chalices and things. So we bring in Meltdown, that's no good. Cast the Fire can blow up a Chalice if that's a thing that happens. It is what it is. Uh, Mongoose into some other things. We have a counter spell if they have a crazy turn one that does lots of work. How important is this Chrome Mox to them? I think we'll let them pitch resources and try and hit and try and get them on the thing they're trying to rump into. Right, a Muxus, you say. Into a Blood Moon. I'll say no to Blood Moon. Uh, Channeler is better turn one than the mongoose and then it should hopefully power out the mongoose we can we'll play the time we'll go next turn and just have some big boys we don't want to see another moon here ringleader ringleader sure what's the damage opponent how many uh just a lackey yeah we'll take some damage here uh we have choices we can deploy a time it's a pretty powerful roadblock, or we can brainstorm and deploy a nimble mongoose. But what are we brainstorming into? I guess we got a land that we don't particularly want here. So let's brainstorm away. See if we can grow our boy. Uh, this can go into the graveyard. That's two types now. Uh, these are spells that I like. Uh, let me say goodbye to mongoose. Do you want to say goodbye to Tarmogoy? Just two Tarmogoyfs. It's just so good here. I guess we put Tarmogoy on top. And then we have the option to burn something if we have to. We can always burn in our upkeep to put a creature in the graveyard to turn this into... I guess that's still not going to be enough. As if we tribal, this is instant as well. So if we tar fire and mill the Tarmogoy. But Tarmogoy just so good here. Cavern of Souls. All right, I'm glad we're on the removal half of our deck and not the counter spell half. All right, that ancient tombs definitely helping us out a little. A goblin war chief. Okay, so they're going to play the lackey here before they go to combat. We will do some stuff. So we're going to get ourselves this volcanic goblin on goblin violence right now. I'd like to target this war chief, please. Uh, put this into our graveyard. We don't want this one. We're coming for just two. They have one card in hand. One, two, three, four, five. So could be looking at Muxus in the near future. Um, like this. Do they want to trade our channeler for a Goblin Lackey? Maybe they do. Interesting. Now I can Lightning Bolt this Ringleader and try and flip our channeler. 
and just leave them with no creatures in their creature deck and then deploy a big time of a brainstorm that isn't the one is it uh i think we'll put it on top though right, so this sadly doesn't go quite as to plan as we wanted but we've taken all the creatures off the board and we've just deployed a five six next turn we have forcible blue card so we need to fade this turn i guess force of will isn't very good we're going to brainstorm it away because of the cavern battlecry goblin Chance of the Void. Sure, we're not going to brainstorm it away. But we have a big threat. We're attacking in pretty sizable chunks right now. Two cards in hand. Is it Land Muxus? Sticker Goblin Muxus? Simeon Spirit Guide. I don't think I'm going to counter spell that because we're happy to attack into it. Is this a chomp block time? Or are they going to hold it back for a turn? It's just a chomp block. They're just buying time until they can put Muxus into our face. Feels like they have Muxus and they've just been waiting for the land this whole time. I guess that wasn't the case. Give attacks. Uh, I guess we can't cast a Brainstorm, so we may as well play a Tropical Island. Maybe we can hard cast a Force. Alright, we managed to get there. So we are 2-2 two and two now. We split the games against Goblins. Uh, drawing the removal half of the deck is way better than drawing the Counter Spell half in this matchup. Which is another reason why I would like to play a bunch of Hydroblast in the sideboard, maybe. Alright, let's go on to the final round and see if we can get the 3-2. I'll keep this. We got a threat. We got some varying forms of uh, interaction. Our opponents are found in the channel, which is always nice to see. A Plateau. Yikes. Not a big fan of what Plateau means for us, necessarily. Uh, I think we just waste on that straight away. Our opponents not doing anything with their mana. Going to be a cycle? No. Okay. An ancient tomb. What do we draw in here? So I get the impression our opponent's playing either Red White Painter or the Initiative, which means which of our cards are we supposed to cast? Are we supposed to hold up Stifle to stop the Initiative being introduced into the game? Are we supposed to play our Dragon's Race Channeler with the hopes of trying to steal the Initiative using it? That's kind of where I'm thinking right now. Um, it's a difficult choice to be honest with you. I really don't want to get blown out by the initiative just doing the thing. I think we're going to hold up and try and stifle potential initiative. Maybe that's a bit cagey. All right, no second land from our opponent. That definitely helps us out. And a force of will also helps us out. So now we will deploy our friend and pass a turn holding up stifle and force of will. And brainstorm if we need to do something like that. A solitude pitching forth Eolingus. You're not going to like this opponent. Let's stifle that trigger. Make sure we stifle the right one. Uh, I would like to put that wasteland on top of my library, please. You've already shown us you didn't have any lands, so hopefully we can uh, get there. City of Traitors. Okay. How eager am I to cast a brainstorm right now? Not especially. I'd like to have... Alright, <laughs> let's give it to the Wasteland. Fair enough. I said I'd like to have a bigger channeler, but... Yeah, we could have put some stuff back and maybe... Milled it again. Okay, so this is the initiative. I believe. We haven't seen enough to be 100% sure. I think we do want the meltdowns here. Uh, spell pierce is okay on the play, but not so much on the draw. I think we'll strip one of those. Uh, Dazes do not feel great here either, so we'll take those and we'll have this sort of action. Uh, I don't want to cast into the fire. It can blow up the One Ring if they're playing it. It's probably slightly better than Daze, but is it even that much better than a Daze? I'm pretty sceptical on that one, actually. Alright. Uh, we have the Life of Malone, but we don't have a Wasteland to go with it. I don't really like this hand. Like... It's all air. By the time we've cast all these cantrips, our opponent's probably going to be killing us. So I think we should mulligan into something a bit more aggressive. Um, big creature. Potential removal. But not always. Um, wasteland. Hmm. I do like the wasteland here, obviously. You know me, I love a good wasteland. If our opponent doesn't make a turn one threat, it's pretty good. If they mulligan, we're more like... Oh, I do think we keep this, and we'll probably throw back the Merc Tide. That's a thing for later. 
that was synergized very well with time of grief and time of grief is something we can just play and steal the initiative with early a chrome mox okay we're gonna see on turn one is it a blood moon it was a magus of the moon i can live with that case of chaos adventurer so the are initiative fable of the mirror breaker that's a pretty good one i think we can wasteland here I think we are priced into killing their guy if possible we don't get to do that so probably priced into tropical islanding for a ponder trying to set things up um no it's any order and shuffle here we need okay another wasteland is interesting but i suspect it's going to be too late to be that important because our opponent has five mana this turn if they potentially if they have a land possibly even more so i think our opponent's in a very good spot here Yep, here comes a treasure. Take a little bit of chip damage. Are we going to see something scary this turn? Is it Archon of Amiria? Okay, that is kind of annoying. But could be worse. It's not a big initiative creature. So we get one spell a turn. Do you want to use that spell casting a brainstorm to try and look for a land that can cast a lightning bolt? I think that's an acceptable way to use our turn. Okay. Okay, deck. I understand. Um, I don't like it, obviously. So I think the bauble was pretty... Well, the red cards aren't really doing anything either, are they? Okay, I guess we are playing a tapped wasteland. We we'll probably have to say no to this one. And we know we're not drawing another useful thing for forcible purposes. So we just got red cards on top. So next turn we play a time away from a tapped wasteland. Turn after brainstorm for a land, I guess. We do have the biggest creature on the board. That's always nice, but they do have four power in the air every turn, which will kill us pretty quick. But if we can find the lightning bolt mana, we can try and put this Arcan of Amira to bed so they can't do that. But then as soon as they find anything else scary, then they got this reflection of Kiki Jiki. So, so we do have the tar fire for that actually. So uh, is this going to be an initiative season dungeon here? That's going to be a real kick in the face. Yikes. Okay. Okay. So they're going to copy their season dungeon here. Because I know what the top card of our library is, I don't think we're beating this. So, do I want anything differently on the play? The days have become slightly more appealing. Um, Seal of Removal was nice in com combination with Wastelands and things. Like I said, the Stifle can stop the initiative being introduced in the first place. Uh, maybe you don't want the two loams. Tarfire doesn't have that many targets. Maybe we'll get rid of a Tarfire. And maybe a loam. Maybe one days. We still have the loam option here. Like back in the day, you used to run one loam in the sideboard. But I do think waste down your opponent to oblivion is a pretty viable strategy in this matchup. All right. Um, not really in love with this hand. I think we can do better. That is very much a better hand. We'll keep this. Uh, we will get rid of the Stifle, I think. The Stifle or the Ponder. It's probably the Stifle. I'm probably going to end up pitching the Ponder anyway. So we get a threat on turn one. We can counter something on turn one as well. Then we can play another threat. That'll already be a two, three, or greater. So sign me up on that one. This makes the initiative a little bit less scary to be introduced because we have a chance of getting it back because we've got the first creature. All right. Next turn, we're going to see the Chalice of the Void here. How much do I care about this Chalice of the Void? There's a lot of stuff that this hits. I think we do have to say no to this one. This will make our Tarmogoy very large as well. Uh, we don't need this. This can go into our graveyard. I say very large. It's, it's an unusual type. It's not going to be like enormous straight away, but it's going to be something. I'll certainly take something. Ancient Tomb can wheel our opponent down nicely. And play ourselves out, cheeky little boy. Oh, we got a 3 4. If we can find a way of growing it one more, then I'll be happy. Love to find a ponder next turn or something. Give us a chance to flip our guy and have our other guy be a 4 5. Or a 5 6 even. Right, so this is going to be a seasoned dungeon here. Okay, 
That's a pretty good one. Seal of removal is very good here. Days. You are not very good here. Um, if we attack with both guys, we do get the initiative. But we probably trade our channeler to do so. Which doesn't feel good to me. We're not blocking anyway. So I think we attack with our Tarmogoyf and see if we can bait our opponent into not blocking. Because they might think, oh no, they've got something. Yeah, look at that. And this means this won't get forged, so the race actually is in a bit of a happier spot for us. We obviously can't block their Seasoned Dungeoneer. But that's worked out quite nicely for us. Do we play this land out? I don't believe we do. I think we hold it for brainstorm purposes. Also, we can represent forcible blue card if we have two cards in hand. So that attack is our opponent uh, thinking we have something there. So, you know, that's a, that's a very interesting inflection point that you can really examine. And it might end up being, like, essential to how this game is won or lost based on a bluff, potentially. But if they block there and I do have something, then they probably lose the game on the spot. So it's kind of an interesting trade-off there. I think if we had three different types in the graveyard, then we wouldn't be doing that. Amagus of the Moon. Interesting. I would like to try and counterspell this. Try and find some red removal. Uh, Murktide Regent. This can go into the graveyard. That's a creature type. Would you like to tap your Ancient Tomb and deal yourself two damage? Like, this is a shock that surveils. So we basically just cast, like, Magma Jet here. For those uh, players who've been around for a long time. They're paying. They didn't need to, right? Because it was on human. That's interesting. I think we may have just gained our opponent a little bit there. All right. I would like to draw a tar fire, please. Lightning bolt's acceptable, but tar fire would be real good. Actually, no. If they put the counters on the magus here, that's less good. But they're not blocking our tarmogoyf. Where are these counters going? Just on the dungeoneer. Just stacking it up. Sure. Right. Tar fire. Not a tar fire. And we get attacks. If we attack with this, they probably chump block. No, they probably just take the four. That's acceptable. All right. This gives us a slightly bigger Dragon's Race Channeler. Uh, I guess we hold two cards in hand to represent forcible blue card. Forcible blue card. I think we baited our opponent into making a couple of mistakes here with uh, unusual play patterns from us. So we were just trying to use our days to surveil here. But we managed to get the Ancient Tomb tap as well, even though they had the cavern. And we also got that free attack in earlier. Oh no, what is this? Fourth Eolingus. All the horses. So many horses. Um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then they get trap, and that's the rest of the damage. They can also make their Magus unblock if they really want to, but that's not going to be what they're up to. Yep, I think they've got us here. Uh, probably block the Magus, actually. That's the clever play here. But we are dead, right? This is 10, and then the trap is another 5. Although, if we had a Stifler now, we could stifle this trigger on the trap. That would be good. This is the, this is the game here. TG opponent. Oh, two cards down was the Lightning Bolt. It's a little ways off, but... All right, let's... Uh... So we finished with a 2-3 record, so not great. Let's talk about the deck. So things sort of broke a little bit, unfortunately, for us on occasion. But I think what I did find is that our cyborg just didn't have the cards we needed in some matchups. Like... There's so many red decks around right now. I think Hydroblast is a, is a must in some number. And what Hydroblast does is it can be a force type effect. You know, it can be that one mana hard counter when you need it. But then if they have things like Cavern, which are everywhere at the moment, like you saw in Initiative and in Goblins, you can still kill the creature. So it's a removal spell as well. And I think that's just where I want to be. I want to be playing more of those instead of Veil of Summers. I think we need Hydroblasts. So I think that's a, a problem with our deck here. Now, I haven't played this since before Sticker Goblin was available online. I think last time I played this was when I was testing for European Legacy Masters. So that was like August testing for the beginning of September. So things have changed a little bit since then. 
and the deck needs to update in order to to keep going. What I will say is the decks where Nimble Mongoose was good against are not as prevalent. So like the Grixis tempo deck has now fallen off and the main tempo deck that people are playing is Rug. So there's less bow masters around you would necessarily think. So I think we should be running Delver. I think we should be... I know it's not exactly an exciting or a novel idea. Sorry, Mongoose, but I think we should be running Delver of Secrets here. Because what Delver of Secrets does is you can play at turn one and then start attacking for three damage on turn... That's what the card says, right? Uh, you can start attacking for, damage, for three damage on turn two, which means that you have an evasive threat so you can steal the initiative in those matchups. It's an evasive threat so you can get through a bunch of goblins on the ground. It's a threat that you don't have to necessarily work that hard to make it go off. So I think I want to play a deck with four Delver of Secrets, four Dragon's Race Channeler. I think that would be my starting point for a Canadian Threshold deck in this day and age, just swapping out the Mongoose for the Channeler instead. I think that is going to yield a lot more success. But what that means is if you're running Delver, it means you're probably not running Seal of Removal. And you're running Vapor Snag because you want to have more... So you're at this weird thing where you've got number of like types for Tarmogoyf and Channeler. But then you've also got Instants and Sorceries for the Delver Secret. So it becomes a bit awkward. So you probably cut one Tarmogoyf and we have four Delver in here. And let's, let's just do a quick instance and sorcery count while I'm here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. All right, so we have 17 plus 9. So if I can do maths, that's 26. So that's not quite half a deck, but quite a lot. Maybe you don't. Maybe you can still run the seal of removal then, because it is very good with Channeler and Tarmogoyf, because it's a proactive piece of removal, so you can play it out, which then gives you your activation on Channeler, so you get your surveil going, which is what you want to be doing as much as possible. And it's another type, so for things like Tarmogoyf and Channeler as well. And you can target your own things to save them in a pinch sometimes. So maybe I'm still supposed to be running Seal of Removal, and we just swap these four cards out for Delver of Secrets. So we just have much more aggressive lines. Because Nimble Mongoose wasn't very aggressive when we played it. And you know, that's kind of the sad truth of that creature these days. And if we're doing that, we're not running as many green spells. So there is a consideration about messing with the mana base. And not having three trops and three volks. So that's something to think about. You can go to a four and two split. But I quite like having the three and three split. And I do like the fact that you can just run out the the trops into Wasteland a lot more than you can. If you have uh, like a two and four split in favour of Volcanic Islands, you kind of have to protect your Tropical Islands a little bit. Whereas this way you, you know, you're... You're probably going to be fine unless they've got triple wasteland. And if they've got triple wasteland and they're not dead after activating all their wastelands, then they're probably going to be a deck that's beating you anyway, right? So I think that's probably acceptable. And we do have Life in the Loams, so there's that option as well. I don't think we need to have two Life in the Loams on the sideboard. I think we can just have the one and trade these in for Hydro Blast. And I think already the deck is looking better. Do we need Cast Into the Fire? No. Will I like a different removal spell of some kind? Yes. What is that removal spell? That is an interesting question. Is it another Hydroblast? Possibly. Is it Forked Bolt? Or is it something like Unholy Heat, which can uh, sort of reach up and hit bigger things? That might be worth uh, considering. Or it could be something like a Pyroclasm. Or a, sorry, not Pyroclasm, a Rough and Tumble, which can deal two damage to all creatures without flying. So your Delver jumps above it. Your time is too big to get killed by it. Your channeler should hopefully be above it as well. And it's a sorcery, which can help your sorcery count. So that that might be where I'd want to go. I think Rough and Tumble is probably in a reasonable spot now. But maybe you want more things to kill um, X4s. So you could run something like Flame Slash, which is a card you don't see very often these days. It's red, sorcery, four damage to target creature. Uh, which is just, you know, fine. And it's a sorcery, and we don't have a very high sorcery count. So if we're looking at, like, our our types in our deck here, uh, in this list, so we have... Just move it all around slightly for you. We have Wastelands and all of our other lands. So, you know, a block of lands, fair enough. Then we have 22 instants 
obviously one of these has got some additional types so we can kind of put it over there and then we've got you know a sorcery like one sorcery spell one enchantment a couple of artifacts so like it's kind of an awkward time getting like delirium on your channeler so maybe maybe flame slash in the cyborg is something i want to try out it like it conveniently kills under mountain adventurer and seasoned dungeoneer as well as killing things like uh cave of chaos adventurer and all the things that your red removal is you know going to be pointing at anyway now it is sorcery speed which definitely comes with the downside but it's one mana guaranteed four damage which i don't think is something you can necessarily pass up so i might try that next time a lot of thoughts and i'm definitely going to be playing this again this is a deck i really enjoy it's something i own in paper although i haven't played it for a while in paper to be honest with you but i'm a big fan of doing threshold things we didn't get to live the stifly wastelandy dream but our stifles were definitely useful they were countering a load of stuff from goblins that could have ruined us like um when they had uncounterable guys we could at least stop them tutoring for things that felt very powerful uh, we can stop the initiative coming into the game you can use it to beat combo decks like doomsday and storm so there's a lot of power that you get out of the stifle in this particular shell i don't think it's like a great spell in general but we are relatively aggressively pitching things to force the will and relatively aggressively interacting with our opponent where we can and stifle is just another layer of interaction and if we can do wasteland stifle against some of these like big control decks that are trying to have loads and loads of like weird colored mana and stuff then that's going to be really potent so i think that is something to really consider and a single stifle can certainly turn the tide of a game but like i said it needs a specific shell to go and i don't think it's something you can just chuck anywhere all right i think we're done for today i hope the person who won the raffle for my patreon is happy with uh, a bit of canadian threshold and i assure you there will be more threshold in the future i do love this deck a lot all right thank you so much for watching and i hope you're enjoying your new year and i hope this whole new year is good for you all right once again cheers for watching and goodbye if you'd like to support me in the channel please check out my patreon it has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support a low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel a mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles and lastly the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel if you're interested in supporting the channel this way please check out the link in the description